loves you and wants you for his own. He's calling out for you. Good morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. I invite you to stand with us. Here we go. Join me. There is power, power. Here in the south, the south. And we're all together, together.
Good morning, New Horizon Church. It's me again, Jeremy Lewis, your movie host. If you're new around here or you missed the past couple of weeks, we're in a series called At The Movies. It's been a really fun time. We didn't have popcorn, candy, and we still got some more movies to come. So you're gonna wanna check out www.nhcatthemovies.com to have a chance to win prizes and to stay connected throughout this series. If you're new around here, we want to say welcome, and we're so glad that you're visiting us. Directly after the service, there's some staff and team members who would love to meet and help you become connected throughout the life of the church. As soon as you leave service today, make sure you stop by VIP to meet some people and grab some free food. One of the things we value here at New Horizon Church is groups. The biggest reason we hold groups in high regard is because life is simply better connected. It's no doubt you're an awesome person but doing life alone is boring. So if you've been wanting to meet people, learn more about the Bible, or discover your purpose within God's story, directly after service in the lobby, take about 20 minutes to attend starting point orientation. As we continue today, make sure you quiet your cell phones because you know that's rude. Enjoy the movies and let's get ready for tithes and offerings. Thank you. Hey, New Horizon. Good morning. Glad you guys are here with us. I say it every year. But again, if you're a dad and you came to church, make sure they take lots of good care of you the rest of the day. Because, you know, dads, that's you're supposed to be at least your one time of year to say, I don't want to go to church. So we're glad you're here with us. We'll hook you up with something really special a little bit later on for being here. In fact, all the guys for being here today, we'll hook you up in a little bit. We're glad you're here with us as we continue to worship and take a look at Noah later on uh, from our At The Movie series. We're going to worship by bringing our tithes and offerings. If you need to get ready for that, go ahead and get ready for that. The welcome team will be coming around in just a few moments to pass some buckets. I'd encourage you to fill out those connect cards as well. That lets us know how we may pray with you or answer any questions you may have about anything. Connect about anything. Sign up for anything. Use that card, drop it in the offering bucket when it passes by. And there's always two black boxes out by the columns as you exit that also you can drop your cards in if you miss the bucket when it comes around here in just a few moments. We are driven around New Horizon Church to encounter God and engage in community. And the way we live that out is through our core values. Our core values are to invest and invite, to serve, to experience community through groups, to grow spiritually by taking ownership of our own spiritual journey, and to give. Giving is a core value, and we live that out by looking at four areas. Tithing, the obedience factor, by bringing back to God the first 10%, the first fruits of our resources. By giving above and beyond from time to time to expand ministry through offerings. By living out good stewardship. We call it the 10 10 80 plan. Give God 10% off the top, save 10% for yourself, and then be a good steward with the remaining 80%. And the final thing, if we do all of that, it'll lead us to a life of generosity. We talk about just personal generosity, whether it's the ability to help a neighbor who needs a little help, a family member who's got a surgery coming up or needs something that way, or just someone maybe that you don't know and it's just lending a little helping hand. It's buying a meal or it's buying some you know, diaper supplies or it's sending a student who you may never meet one-on-one -on -one to summer camp so they might experience God in a whole new way. And we've been encouraging you to do that over the past several weeks by scholarshipping some students. And this year we have more students heading to summer camp on the 23rd than we've ever sent to summer camp from New Horizon Church. And we also have more scholarships available than we've ever had. And the only way we're able to do that is because of your generosity. And so over the past several weeks we've been saying, Please, scholarship, if you can give something, give something. And I'm just here to say we really don't need any more scholarships. And so thank you so much for that. That is amazing. And here's what happens. Not only do you get to send a kid to camp who may not know Jesus yet, several students usually give their lives to Jesus at summer camp. And we'll celebrate that through baptism on July 6th, most likely. But they're learning something else. They are learning that idea of generosity. They're learning that God loves them so much and that God loves the world so much that there are people who are willing to be generous. And that generosity played out. Dwayne shared this a couple of weeks ago, but I, I've got to share it again. We, we shared the story of, of Bobby, who was scholarship last year to go to summer camp. And then this year, uh, I guess birthdays or graduation or something, received a gift from a relative of 100 bucks. 
And he brought that to New Horizon Church. And he said, my siblings and I want someone else to go to camp and experience what we experienced. So not only are, you exper- are they experiencing Jesus, but they're understanding generosity on a level that most of us don't get for a, a, a long, long time. So I want to encourage you in your generosity. Say thank you in your generosity. We'll do our best to create those opportunities. Uh, we found out this week that one of our school partners, Central Elementary School, has got a group of families who were expecting to be able to be served through the school system uh, meals throughout the, the week as they did summer school, and that has been uh, kind of taken away. And so there are a lot of families trying to figure out where the next meal is coming from. And through Facebook, we've already said, hey, if you guys are willing to step up with those kind of staple items, those items, uh, you know, those, those non-perishable items that kids can prepare themselves if they need to, then we're going to have the buckets out pretty much all summer out front, you know, from ramen noodles to, to peanut butter and everything in between. So if you want more information on that, check out Facebook, New Horizon Church, and, or just ask somebody at the care center or uh, guest services, and we'll give you more information on that. So again, I just want to say thank you for being a generous church who helps people experience life change through Jesus Christ. We're going to keep worshiping together, so let's stand together as the buckets will be passed, and let's pray, and then we're going to go on and keep worshiping. Father, thank you so much for loving us and for showing us what generosity really is on the cross when you gave yourself through Jesus. God, I pray that we would respond with generous hearts and generous lives out of the fact that you gave first and you gave best, and we would never forget that, that we would never forget what true generosity looks like, the giving of a life, for our sake, to make us right with you. God, I pray that we would live out our lives, that we would give out of that, that we would worship out of that, that we would serve out of that, we would connect out of that generosity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Your word 
Yes, Lord. We welcome you. We welcome you, Lord. Take up your rightful place upon the throne. Glory, honor, praise belong to you, to you alone, Lord. The praise to your name, the one and only name, above all names. We give you the glory, the honor today. Receive it, Lord Jesus.
Let's pray for a moment. God, we just we sing our love to you today, Lord Jesus. We give you the glory. But God, we thank you most of all for your love for us. It's an unending and enduring love that goes on forever and ever. And Lord, it's a love that's active, it's pursuing us. It's a love that reaches out for us wherever we're at in life. And that isn't even the most amazing part. The amazing part is that when we respond to that love, you call us sons and daughters of your own. You adopt us into your family. That's amazing. And on this day that we celebrate Father's Day and our earthly fathers, God, we also celebrate you as our heavenly Father. Your love is overwhelming. There's nothing your word says that can separate us from the love of your love in Christ Jesus. And we give you the grace, the glory, and the honor, and the praise today. There's no space that His love can reach There's no place where we can't find peace There's no end to amazing grace Take me in with your arms spread wide Take me in like an orphan child Never let go, never leave my side
You may be seated. men at my back and you stand alone and defy me I'm not alone when they come they will be desperate and there will be many snakes are coming too all the crawls all that slips Remember, Noah, he chose you for a reason. Take the ark! Choice was in your hands, Noah. Hey, good morning. How is everyone? Welcome to New Horizon Church this morning. My name is Dwayne, and I am one of the pastors around here, and usually I'm hanging out with your kids or your students, but today um, I have the privilege and honor to come down and speak one of the message at the movies, and we're going to talk about Noah. Who saw the movie Noah? Raise your hand. A couple of you? That's good, because it wasn't that great of a movie wasn't biblical. The, the, the book is better in the Bible, um, out of Genesis. Um, before we get started, we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 7 um, as we start, and then we're going to go into Genesis uh, chapter 6. Uh, but I want to say one thing to the dad and to the men here. I want to say thank you for investing in the kids and the students here at New Horizon Church. You are making a huge difference. And to our dads, Um, Make memories. Make stories with your kids at home. That's one great thing that you'll be able to talk about as they grow up. That's one thing that my dad does is is he always brings up stories. Some good stories, some not so good stories. But we laugh about them now. One story that he talks about a lot is my dad was a um, choir leader at the church I grew up in. And every Wednesday night... He would be practicing with the choir and singing and doing all that. So I had a lot of free time to roam, which wasn't good. And one Wednesday night, they had just poured a new, brand new sidewalk outside of our church. And it was beautiful, fresh cement. And the maintenance man said, Dwayne, if you want to write your initials in there, you can do that. So he gave me a stick, and I wrote my initials, D.S. He left. And I saw that fresh cement. So I decided to write my whole name. D-W-A-Y-N-E. Big block letters. And there was still some fresh cement. So I decided to add to that. I don't know why I did this. I was young. Stupid. Stupid. So I wrote a S S. Now, I've done some stupid things in my life, but that was probably one of the stupidest things. It's a story that my dad loves to tell now, and he laughs about it now. That Sunday afternoon when he saw it, there was no laughing. There was a lot of beating, but there was no laughing. 
Dads, make stories with your kids. It's a great thing. I love a story. I love a good story. I'd much rather, though, watch a movie for two hours than read a book for five hours or five weeks or five months or five years, ever how long it would take me to go through it. So I was thinking about this, and, and there's some stories that I really like, some movies that I really like. Now, these aren't my top movies except for maybe one of them, but I love the stories. And the first one is Fifty First Dates. Anybody like that movie? Yeah. That's my chick flick movie. Don't hate on me. That's my chick flick movie. I love that. I could watch it over and over and over again. The second movie is Toy Story. Yes. I'm not much into animation or cartoon shows or movies like that, but I like this movie. And then the third one, which is in probably my top five list of my movie, is Remember the Titans. I love the story in this movie, a true story. It's a great movie. And then today, one of my favorite biblical stories is Noah. It has a great story. It's about obedience. It's about trust. It's about faith. And my fifth grade Sunday school teacher, John Wiseman, could tell this story better than anyone else. A lot of times he would take us out on his houseboat on the river and we would go down the river and he would tell us this story. Sometimes it would be in our Sunday school class and we would take the tables and we would stack them together and we would put the chairs on top of the table and we would get in the chairs and then he would wrap it in brown construction paper to, to make it look like a boat. And some of us got to be Noah. I usually got to be a giraffe because <laughs> I was tall. But he would tell that story with us up there. And then when he was done with the story, we got to sing that great old hymn of the church, the Arky Arky song. Have you ever heard of that? Nobody in the first service had heard of that. A few of you, so I'm not going to sing it for you today because I have no rhythm and I have no beat. But it went like this. The Lord told Noah to build him an Arky Arky. Oh, you're going to sing along. The Lord told Noah to build him an Arky Arky. Build it out of gopher, barky, barky. And when we got to that line, we just shouted it out. It was awesome. We loved it. The story about Noah is an epic story. And most of the time we think the epic part is about the flood or the ark. That's what we hear about the most. But the epic part of this story is the part when God told him to build a boat. And Noah built it. Up to that point, it hadn't rained. So Noah didn't really know what rain was. And God went to him and said, I'm going to cause a flood. And Noah's like, a flood? And then God told Noah, this is what I want you to do. I want you to build this boat. And he gave him the dimensions. And he told him what he wanted in it. He said it's going to begin to rain. And it began to rain for 40 days. And then there was a flood that lasted for five months. And here's, here's the thing about the flood. The flood lasted. God killed everyone and everything that wasn't on the ark. God's purpose in the flood was not to destroy people, but to destroy the wickedness and sin of that time. And here's the part that my Sunday school teacher never told me. Never heard about it. Didn't talk about it long. After the floods receded, Noah got off the boat, and he got naked, drunk, and he danced. <laughs> naked, drunk, and he danced. So here we have this pillar in our, we have Noah, who's obedient to God, and then at the end of the story, fails. That's what some people say. So this story is about trust and faith. And there's some tension in this story. And the tension takes place in between trust and faith. Sometimes in between trust and faith, there is doubt. You ever had doubt? You ever had doubt about something? It's okay to doubt. It's okay to question. 
A lot of times in church we say, oh, we don't want you to doubt or we don't want you to question anything. But you know what? It's okay. There's things that I doubt. There's things sometimes that I question. But there's tension. There's tension in this story. And it comes in trust and faith. And it's in our own stories too. In the trust and faith that we have doubt. Trust is belief that someone or something is reliable, good, honest, and effective. Faith is acting on something unseen. Trust is the foundation of faith, but overcoming doubt leads to stronger faith. This is a story about trust, faith, and obedience. We're going to start in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. You can turn to it in your Bible or on your electronic device, or we're going to have it up here on the screens. This is what it says. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Three things stick out in this scripture. The first one, it was by faith. The second one, he obeyed God. The third one, by his faith. Noah had faith. Noah was obedient. This is the question that I have for you today. Why did God choose Noah? Why did God look down and choose Noah? We know from archaeologists that there was about a million people on the earth at that time. And God chose one person, Noah. I believe that God looks and he sees our heart. He sees what our heart is made of. And when he saw Noah, he saw a man of conviction. He saw a heart that loved him. He saw a man that was willing to stand alone. In 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, it says, The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. He looks at our heart. He sees inside of our heart. He sees what we're made of. God chose Noah because he walked in close relationship with God. Noah did everything he asked him to do. When God said, Noah, I need you to do this, Noah did it. No shortcuts, exactly as he asked him. So the story picks up in Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 7. The whole story of Noah can be found in Genesis 6, 7, 8, and 9. It's a great story to read if you've never read it. In those four chapters, there's many characteristics of Noah that God used. Genesis 6. Then the Lord saw how great man's wickedness on earth had become, and that every inclination of thoughts of his heart was only evil at the time. And the Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I'll wipe out mankind whom I've created from the face of the earth, man and animals, creatures that move along the ground, and birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made man. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. God looked down. He found one man that he was going to. To use. Somebody tweeted um, on New Horizon, why did God put mosquitoes on the ark? We have a lot of stinking mosquitoes in North Carolina. It's a good question that we can ask God when we get to heaven someday. Mosquitoes. God said to Noah, will you trust me? Will you trust me in impossible situations? And I've thought about that. There's situations that we face that to us seem impossible. 
So what do you do in those situations when nothing makes sense? When in your mind you can't make sense out of the situation. And I believe at some point that's what Noah faced. But Noah was obedient. And out of his obedience, he was available. And that's what God asked us to do. God asked us to be available. Availability is a lot more important than ability. God doesn't need what we can offer. God doesn't need our talents. What God needs from us is what he can do through us. This past week, my wife and I were at a get-together um, supporting one of our students. And we didn't know anybody there except for this young teenager. And so we were milling around and we were talking to people and we ran into this couple and, and they asked us if we were part of the family or if um, we were just there as friends. So I said, well, I'm the youth pastor and, and we're here to support, you know, this young lady. And they said, oh, where are you, youth pastor? And I'm telling this story because God worked through many people in the Bible. We can look at the life of Noah. We can look at the life of Moses, Abraham, Paul, King David. And we can see how God used them and worked through their life. But God also wants to work through your life. He wants to work through you. He wants you to be available. So I began to tell this couple, my wife and I began to talk to them, and I'm a youth pastor at New Horizon Church, and they said, oh, yeah, we've heard of that church, great church. He began to tell a story about how his daughter had fallen away from church and had fallen away from God. And he said, she was invited to your church one Sunday by a co-worker, by somebody that comes here to church. And she loved it. She absolutely loved it. He said she was sitting in service and she was texting me how great this church was and how plain the preacher spoke about Jesus. And then she texts me, she says, and dad, the lights are so cool. She said, you wouldn't believe it. I'm sitting here and we're having interaction with my phone and with my light, with the lights in the church. She said, unbelievable church. I like this church. Here's a girl that had been away from church. Her dad said she was away from God. And because of Frank, our lighting man, who's creative and who was obedient to God and was listening to God, came up with this idea. For someone in our church that invited this young lady to New Horizon, she heard the gospel. She saw that church wasn't a threatening place. God wants to work through you. That's why we talk about invest and invite. God just wants you to be available. He wants to use you. So Noah was available. Noah dared to be different. It says in Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time. He walked in close fellowship to God. At this point in the world history, the society was morally bankrupt. Genesis 6, 11, 12 says there was corruption, violence, immorality. It was the pit. Yet through all of that, Noah stood. Noah stood and held his ground, and he was, in, he was obedient. In our culture, sometimes, I think we have the tendency to think that the majority is always right. You know what I'm saying? The crowd is always right. Guess what? The majority or the crowd is not always right. And Noah stood out. And this is what, when I read the story of Noah, this is what I see Noah saying. One plus God equals 
a majority. Noah plus God in that time, he stood alone and he knew that if God was on his side, he was not alone and he was in the majority. Think about the critics back then with Noah. Noah goes to the grocery store, to the restaurant, and people are whispering, thinking, there's that wacko. There's that weirdo that's building a boat because it's going to flood. I'm sure he got bashed by his friends. Think about his family. Think about being his kids at school. They go to school and they say, hey, what's your dad do for a living? He's a boat builder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my house is the one with the big ark in the front of it. <laughs> criticism. He got criticism. Sure, the kids went home and said, Daddy, can't you please, please get a regular job? Quit building this boat. It's ridiculous. He got criticism from his family, from his friends. But Noah stood his conviction. Noah was obedient. It says in the Bible that it took anywhere from 80 to 120 years to build that boat. It's a long time to go through criticism, to go through and stand out and be on your own. Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 29, uh, verse 25. It says, the fear of man is a trap. That means if you worry about what other people think, what other people say, what other people think about you, if that's what you are concerned about, and that's what you always worry about, then you're going to be in trouble. Noah stood out because he was available. He was willing to be different. He was willing to stand out in a crowd. He had convictions. What gave him the confidence to be different? says in verse 9 in chapter 6 of Genesis, it says, he walked with God. He had a fellowship with God. He had a relationship with God. He was in love with God. He said, I'm going to do what I think is right. Let's be honest here. Noah's building a boat. At some point, i got to believe, he thought, or ask the question, what am I doing? I'm listening, God, but what am I doing? All these people are saying crazy things about me. I'm standing here. I'm believing in you. I'm trusting in you. I'm stepping out on faith. But this seems a little odd. And see, Noah didn't measure success by comparison to others. We need to measure success by obedience to God, not by comparison to others. That caused Noah to follow God completely. Not in Noah's timetable, when he wanted to, in his way, when he felt like it, but completely. Genesis 6, says, Noah did everything just as God commanded. And then go over to chapter 7, and it says, And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him to do. So what do you do when life doesn't make sense? That's the question. The second important and biggest question, will I trust God when life doesn't make sense? Will you be obedient? Will you listen to God? This is what obedience is. We learn that obedience, and, and sometimes we think of obedience as just doing something or you'll get in trouble. Maybe we got that from our parents. Maybe I got that from my parents. They told me to do something or you'll get in trouble. It's not the kind of obedience that God is talking about. I believe this is what obedience is. And I'm going to put it up on the screens for you. Obedience is love plus trust plus action. The love is the relationship part. I'm in love with God. I have a relationship with God. 
The trust part is, I trust what God says. I trust his word. And then the action part is faith. I trust God. Now I'm going to take action. I'm going to step out on faith. I'm going to believe what he is telling me is truth. Love plus trust plus action. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, obey my commandments. It all starts with love. You know what? It's not hard to obey God when you're in love with God. But where our problem comes in is the whole trust. I trust God. Now am I going to show that faith and I'm going to step out? And I I tried to think of an illustration. And so the only thing I could think of is to bring my buddy Jamie out here. And I trust Jamie. I work for Jamie, so I say I trust Jamie. It's a good idea. Thank you. And so here's this chair. And I'm going to trust that that chair will hold me. I trust that. Now where the faith part comes in, am I willing to sit in it? Do I trust Jamie enough that he's going to hold that chair where it is? And I'm going to sit in it. And he's going to put a blindfold on me. You should take your glasses off. Okay. Now, some. You're going to have to trust that it's going to be where it okay. needs to be when it needs to be there. Right? Yes. I heard the sermon the first time. Okay. Now, sometimes we have to step out on blind faith. But do we trust? And if we trust, do we step out and take action? Faith. I trust. I hear the chair moving. So I'm going to trust Jamie that I'm going to sit in the chair. Thank you. Now that is just an illustration that I want you to catch. Because obedience is very important. We talk about it a lot around here. Obedience is love plus trust plus action. A life of obedience starts with choosing to obey one thing. I don't know what that one thing is for you. But obedience starts by trusting one thing. Obedience is simply another word for faith. You say, I've got a lot of faith. How much do you obey God without question? Okay, God, you've told me to do that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to step out on faith. Faith is following instructions even when it doesn't make sense. The project God gave Noah didn't make sense. It didn't make sense for several reasons. Think about Noah. It had never rained. The rain came up from the earth. It had never fallen from the sky at this point in Genesis. Noah was building this ark. God told him to build this ark, and he was building this ark. And the closest body of water was 500 miles away, the Mediterranean Sea. There was no river. And here's the craziest thing, and this is something only God could do. God rounded up all those animals and put them on the boat. How does that happen? Noah had to step out on faith. So what do you do when nothing makes sense? Maybe this week or over the last month or sometime, you've got a report about a health situation that you may have or somebody in your family may have, and to you it just doesn't make sense. Maybe in a marriage, you've had a spouse just to walk out. It doesn't make any sense. Maybe in a relationship, something's happened. Maybe 
you lost your job or a coworker lost their job or you know of people this coming year that, that jobs are going to be cut and you may be one of them. It doesn't make sense. What do you do in those situations? What do you do when, when life to you just doesn't make sense? Here's the thing about Noah. Noah didn't argue. He didn't complain. He didn't try to explain it away. He just said, I trust you, God. He said, I trust you, and I'm going to continue to step out on faith. See, it wouldn't be faith if you didn't see it all, if you saw it all up front. Noah's our example in this story, a life of obedience. Noah was available. Noah dared to be different. Noah followed God completely, and that's why God could use him. Noah was obedient with everything. He's our example today in this story that I'm telling you about. But that's not our greatest example. Our greatest example of the life of obedience is Jesus Christ. Look what it says in Philippians chapter 2, 8. He, Jesus, was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death. His death on a cross. He shows us the way. So now when we look at the cross, we see a life of obedience. We see a life that he trusted God. We see a life that he gave to die in our place. He is the example of obedience. So this morning as we close, what's God telling you to be obedient about? This is one thing that, that I have learned as I've walked with Christ, and I'm still learning it, and sometimes it's hard, and sometimes I have doubt. But if I am to be the follower that God desires for me to be, I need to be obsessed with obedience to him rather than expecting an explanation from him. See, a lot of times we want to play God. Yeah, I'll step out on faith, God, if you tell me the result. I'll step out on faith if I know the ending. And you know what? It would be a lot easier if God said for us to do something. He said, do this, blank, whatever that is. And here is the result. This is what's going to happen. He doesn't do that. Maybe for some of you here this morning, it's a relationship with Christ. Maybe you're here and you've never started in a relationship with Christ. You've never trusted Jesus as your Savior. Maybe it's in a relationship. Maybe it's in a marriage that you're not being obedient. Maybe it's a moral problem. Christ wants us to be obedient. He wants us to have a relationship with him. That's that love relationship. I love God. I know that God loves me, and he has my best interest. And then there's the trust. I trust you, God. I trust what your word says. And then there's the faith. I need to take this step of faith because I know that God is with me. So this morning I want to ask you, have you put your trust and your faith in Jesus? Are you being obedient? Today, maybe the choice is, do I follow God and I turn my life over to him, or do I just follow the crowd? Today, can you say, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. And with all that I am, I give to you. Can you say that today? 
We want to give you an opportunity to put your faith and your trust in Christ. And as we pray, and as we end this service, you can do that. And maybe you're here as a Christian today, and, and you've been following Christ, but you know that, that God is asking you to be obedient somewhere in your life. Maybe you've given him this part of your life and you've given him this part of your life and you've given him this part of the life and this part of the life, but you're still holding on to this one part. You're afraid to let go. You have doubt. You haven't overcome that doubt. Here's what I know, just as an ordinary guy, that God has your best interest. It's not always going to be easy. Life is not easy. But when we turn our life over to Christ completely, there is freedom. There is joy. And there is peace. So as we pray today, Pray and ask God to give you stronger faith, more trust. And don't walk out of here this weekend if you've never put your trust and faith in Christ. We have, we have volunteers and staff in the prayer and care center out in the VIP that would love to meet you and love to pray with you. Make that decision of obedience today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. That you are a good God. And not only that you love us, but that you like us. You want to be in relationship with us. And Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would move in the lives of people at this church, Lord. That we would become people that are available to you. You're not worried about our talents and our gifts and what we can bring. What you want from us is, is that we are open and that you work through our life. Pray for marriages and relationships, Lord, in this room. We thank you for what you're going to do in the life of each one of us. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Jamie's going to come out and give us some next step instructions. That's, that's good to keep with you the rest of the week. Love plus trust plus action. Love plus trust plus action. If you've prayed to receive Christ or you're wondering what's next in your relationship with Jesus, the best thing you can do is grab a Getting Started gift that's completely designed to help you as you start out your relationship or maybe you're returning to your relationship with Jesus after a ways away. It's got some clearly defined steps, a re, a, a easy to read Bible inside, some Bible study notes and all. And you can pick these up at the Care Center. And for anything else you need from the Care Center, prayer or just to talk to someone, you head out the doors over there to my left, to your right, uh, where the care team is standing over there ready to assist you as well. A couple of next steps for you. Uh, today is the last day for starting point orientation. Starting point is our environment where we kind of lay the groundwork. So if you're new to church or if you're coming back to church after a while or you're just interested in understanding this whole faith thing a little bit more, starting point is designed to lay out some foundational truths about the Christianity and the Bible and, you know, where did the Bible come from and can you trust it and things like that. So it's a great environment for you to grow in your uh, wisdom and knowledge and in your faith, and we encourage you to sign up, check that out. The team will be out in the lobby by the starting point orientation banners to answer any more questions you have, give you a quick tour to show you where our starting point room is as well. And of course, the next step we want everyone to take is to invite someone back next week. We wrap up our At The Movie series next week with Heaven Is For Real. Pastor Dave's going to be back and he's going to bring an amazing message on that. To try to set the record straight a little bit about some of the stuff that's being said about heaven in lieu of some books and movies. And uh, just to give you some real foundational stuff. So if you know somebody who, who is 
you know, facing a time when they're questioning what's eternity look like and what's the other side look like, and maybe they've recently lost a loved one. Uh, uh, Dave has a very unique perspective uh, and ability to uh, speak to us on that, so it's going to be a great message. It'll be a great time to have a friend in the room with you, so we encourage you to grab one of those at-the-movies cards and invite them back uh, with you. Again, if you're new around here, be sure to stop by the VIP, and if you're a dude around here, we have bacon for you. On your way out, if you will, if we can get those lights on, everybody turn around and look to the back. You'll see to the left the bacon ladies who are back there with bacon on a stick and a Coke for all the dudes in the room. So please enjoy. Have a great rest of your Sunday. And we love you and we'll see you next week for Heaven is for Real. <laughs>